Hello, I'm Atuba Judge and I'm so excited. Today is Friday, praise God. And I'm bringing God's truth to you. Listen, I hope you're getting blessed by these things I'm sharing with you. Listen, the word of God is sweet. Now, I'm showing you something here. Jeremiah had prophesied that God said in the last days, no, Jeremiah said something like, let me show you something. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33. It says, Jeremiah 31, 33 says, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Now, I want you to get something. Notice it says, after those days. Which days? So something is going to happen first. And after it happens, then <clears throat> I'm going to do this next. That's what God is saying. So he says, after those days. And what is it I'm going to do? I will put my laws in their minds and in their hands. Now let's go to Joel and see. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And he says, and Joel speaking here, he says, and it shall come to pass afterward. Now you can see some other translation will say after those days. Meaning something is going to happen before this thing happens. Now we don't pay attention to this. That's why sometimes we miss prophecy. Because we want to interpret it the way we like. No, you follow closely. If he said B is going to come after A, then you get to you have to know what A is. So you don't stay and start praying for B and praying for B and you don't concern yourself with what to do about A. See, because see, understand this. God doesn't throw speck just like that, you know. So when we say you're not a speck in the dust, meaning God didn't just throw you out there, you know, go and exist, go and live, go to the earth and live. No, you are the completion of something. You understand what I'm saying? You are a prophecy manifesting on the earth. That's the truth about your life. Whether you know this or you don't know it, but when you know it, you activate it by getting in into it and, and being a blessing to the world. You see? So everything God does is on purpose. If God is giving you wealth, he's not just giving you wealth because he wants to see you drive the best cars, fly in private jets and just be snapping pictures and be showing all over on Instagram and, and, and on Facebook and say, I'm living the life. Think that's what God is concerned about? If he's blessing you, there is a big purpose for that blessing. And if you don't connect to that purpose, your blessing becomes useless. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. There are, there are things, there are people, there are situations, there are projects that are tied to that blessing. And it's in your place to seek the mind of God and say, Lord, what would you have me do with this now? Yeah. So, so when God says, and it shall come to pass afterward, meaning something must happen first before this happens. And let me tell you this. I told you, whatever God is doing now, you should be looking at 10 years from now. You should be looking at 10 years. Whatever God is doing this year, he's setting the foundation. So whatever you see in the foundation this year, and that's why I'm telling you, listen, this year, you're going to receive the biggest in quantity the, and quality, the biggest kind of blessing you have ever received in your life. Now, when that happens, you know that, wow, it means the next 10 years is going to be glorious. Because this is the foundation. You know, you know, you know, you know in a house, you, you just need to, a, 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 an intelligent person just have to look at the foundation and he will tell how many rooms are in this house. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, he can tell. He can tell. An intelligent person can look at a house and say, this house is going to be a story building. He can tell. See, he, he doesn't have to know engineering or, or architect, architecture. No, he can tell. When he looks at the house, he said, okay, I can see three 
oh, this is the sitting room, yeah. This is the kitchen, yeah. This is the store. This is one room. Oh, the parlor is big. The sitting room is big. The kitchen is big. This room is small. Where are the rooms of the house? Oh, it's going to be on another floor. Oh, I see. You understand what I'm By just looking at the foundation, he can tell. So this is this year. I am telling you this truth. I, I pray the Lord makes you understand. This year is a foundational year for the next 10 years. So what you see being planted this year, the kind of things God will lead you to do this year, don't just look at it as a one-off thing. Look at this as a pillar entering the ground to shoot you up. And he's going to carry you like that. So if, if suddenly you miraculously receive something good this year, you just know that, wow, that's how it's going to be. If God leads you to do certain things this year, you just know, okay, I, I can see where, where God is opening up for me. That's, that's what's going to be happening. Praise God. So I'll share with you how Jeremiah prophesied and Joel prophesied the same thing. And what are they saying? In the last days. But see, before this happens, something is going to happen before this. Now that's where we are going with what I'm, what I'm teaching you. But we need to understand the first thing first. And what's the first thing? The first thing is our destination. We need to understand our destination. Where exactly are we going to? And when we understand our destination, then we can begin to look at the journey. How do we get there? When do we know we are almost there at the destination? See, you can't just get up, enter a plane and say, I'm going somewhere without knowing where you're going to. Before you take off, you already know your destination because the plane is not going to drop you somewhere mid-air. I say, okay, it's not, it's not like a bus on the land. It says, well, I've, I've reached to stop me here. No, sir. See? No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Praise God. As you're taking off, you already know where you're going. And so you know how many hours it's going to take you to get there. You know... You, if you want to sleep, you better sleep until you get to that destination. Then, having known your destination, you now need to know, okay, what are the signs that we're almost there? How do I, how do I know? See? So that's what we're doing. So the destination is what Joel prophesied and what Jeremiah prophesied. And these are the last things that we're going to begin to experience in full measure before the Lord returns. And what is it? Everyone is going to be hearing the voice of God for themselves. Nobody's going to depend on any prophet to hear God's voice. Nobody's going to depend on another believer to hear God's voice. We will be sharing testimonies, but no one is going to tell you, look, I'm telling you what God is telling you to do. No, 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 no. We can share, say, ah, I, I, I was praying for you, and I, I, I heard the Lord say this concerning you. Say, wow, thank you. Thank you. You know why I'm thanking you? Because I was beginning to be in doubt. Because God said the same thing to me. But re recently I was beginning to be in doubt. So what he just said now just strengthened me. You see, that's how it works. So there is no come and do this. Come and be my member before this will happen in your life. It's not going to work anymore. Praise God. No, there's going to be honor. Yeah, of course there's going to be honor. Because see, there is no man who walks with the Lord that doesn't show honor to others. No man. When you see a man so proud, doesn't honor anybody, you just know a man who's, who's not in touch with the Lord. No fellowship with the Lord. See, because when you, when you fellowship with the Lord, one of the things that you're going to learn of him is character. Character. I will never forget, you know, Several years ago, I read the story of Moses and how he ended. You remember how Moses ended? God told him, um, speak to the rock. And he went out of anger and struck the rock. And then God says, hey, Moses, no way. You're done. You are done. Ministry is over. Because God says, you did not magnify me before the people. You know, I, I was studying the book of Exodus one time. And I paused and said to the Lord, I said, Lord, 
I don't think you were fair to Moses. I'm telling what I said to Luke. I don't think you were fair to Moses. And I said, why did he say that? I said, see, Moses had an anger problem right from the beginning. Yeah, he did. Maybe because of his stammering, you know, like we, we all feel Moses is to stammer or stutter. So he, he had displayed this anger right from the go. You remember when he came down from the mountain? Now here was Moses pleading with God to have mercy on the people. And God was telling these people have turned away. Moses said, Kai God, if you don't forgive them, what's the point? You know? And God said, okay, I'll forgive them. And Moses came down himself and saw the people and he was like, what? The Bible said the golden calf that they had made, he destroyed it, grounded it into powder, poured it, mixed it with water and gave the people to drink. I was like, whoa, Moses, <laughs> what's going on? I thought you were just begging God right now. So I was talking to him, I said, he had this thing going. You remember when the people asked for meat? God wasn't angry because they asked for meat. Moses was the one that was angry. And Moses was trying to get God to be angry with the people because they asked for meat. And Moses provoked God by asking, say, Lord, when God says, I'll give them meat. Moses said, where are you going to get meat? Do you know how many we are? God said, Moses, what are you talking about? Do you know who you're talking to? Praise God. It's Moses that provoked God, not the people. See? So, he's always had this anger issue. And then, he got to that point. And then he displayed it and God said, no way. You're done. So I said, Lord, you were not fair. You, you should have cautioned him. You should have talked to him about it. And the Lord told me something that blew my mind. This was several years ago. And I, I was humbled. And that scripture in Matthew 11, 20, I think 28 to 31, became a reality to me. When Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. That was when God spoke to me. That was when that scripture became life to me. Because the Lord told me, he said, son, I'll tell you something. He said, I'm listening. He said, when you walk with me, there are certain things I expect you to learn and pick from me. I may never tell you about those things, except you bring it up. But I expect that you observe me, learn my ways, and copy it. He said, Moses walked with me closely. He saw my nature. He saw that I love to show kindness. He saw that I was a forgiving God. You remember when Moses told God, show me your glory. And God did. And what did God do? God was telling Moses his character. He says, I am the Lord, the one who forgives, the one who, he understands. He, he was telling Moses his character. And Moses couldn't learn from that. You are supposed to let that rub off on you. And when it does, it kills that anxiety to be angry at people. You know, sometimes we, we take it out on people. Now we find, you know, just like, you know, you, you are doing something and you find yourself display one kind of anger. And you wonder, where did that come from? Now you know you need to go before the Lord and say, Lord, I don't like what I just displayed today. Before my wife, before my children, before my friends, before my congregation, I don't like what I just did today. I need to take that out. And then the Spirit of God will begin to guide you and teach you. Moses didn't do that. So when he crossed the line, he really crossed the line then. And God says, Moses, no way. It's over. And that's what has happened to lots of people, even ministers of the gospel. You see a minister of the gospel, suddenly a disaster happens and he dies just like that. No one who serves God should die of disaster or a death that you will call perish. If you choose to go that way, it should be glorious. But sometimes you don't know what's going on in their minds. You don't know how God is dealing with them. You just see the result and then you, you say, ah, well, he was a good man now until the Lord will speak to you.
Listen, this weekend, create time of fellowship with the Lord. And tell the Lord this, Lord, I want to start walking in what Jeremiah and Joel talked about. Praise God. We're going to continue on this next week. I bless you this weekend. Let the heavens open over you and bring you fresh revelation that will profit your life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Bye-bye.